and um, and then and then just as I was ready to film, uh, I injured my back and I couldn't do a thing for a year, and so that was a, a bit bizarre. But these things happen. <laughs> Hmm. And um, and then the, the year after that, I was ready to um, start shooting, and basically uh, I shot uh, over a couple of years, 2015 to 2016, and I was editing along the way. So early last year, 2017, the film was pretty much finished uh, then, and I was in Greece last year, the middle part of the year. So I basically put some screenings on there. And now I've been trying to put some screenings on in Australia for the past uh, few months. The major film festivals uh, did not accept the film in Australia uh, and also in, in Greece as well and other parts of the world. Although I didn't try too much with um, putting it into major festivals um, because it um, costs a lot of money, a lot of mass for $100 entry fees. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm. Um, uh, Questions, if anyone's got any questions. Any? Question. Um, congratulations on the film. It's Thanks. fantastic. Thanks. Um, yeah. Very confronting. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, I guess, an obvious question. Why include the songs of Soteria Bellu in the film? Uh, Soteria Bellu, um, for the rest of you to understand which songs they were, it was the female actress where there were five songs in a row. Um, like a rebetica kind of style uh, with a female singer, a female singer who's got a Sotria Bellu, who's got a quite a deep uh, masculine voice. Um, Sotria Bellu is an important figure of, um, of resistance. Mm. Um, she herself personally um, um, helped out a little bit and uh, with certain things. And, and just a, almost as a feminist figure, she's quite amazing. Uh, her, her life, you know, kind of dominated um, by men early and her husband who used to beat her up and things like that. But she rebelled against that and she was just really amazing. Um, and the, those songs, uh, the, the lyrics are not necessarily that revolutionary. But for me, they, they speak volumes that uh, Tsitsanis, uh, the composer, did have. No worries, Nego. Vasilis Tsitsanis, who composed the first two songs in that five song sequence, um, um, did have some uh, lyrics of um, kind of. Uh, Kind of social kind of lyrics and political lyrics, and I, I really love uh, Sotiria Bellu, and, and I think, the, uh, especially that song, uh, "I'm Writing a Letter to God," mm. which really goes unnoticed in Greece. Not many people talk about it. It was it was banned when it was first released. Um, it was a very subtle uh, kind of anti-church uh, song, kind of done in a playful way, but it's still very uh, kind of uh, powerful in its message. Um, Sotria Bellu was one of the uh, singers I heard when I first went to Greece about eight or nine years ago, and uh, she struck me as a yeah, really great kind of singer, and, and I think she fits in the film. The, the film, with all its uh, songs, all the lyrics, not all the lyrics are political as such or revolutionary. Sometimes I go into other spheres, uh, especially the film clip of the woman who's lost her boyfriend, and she's walking around the street kind of thinking to herself, why did he do this to me? To, to, for me, that, that kind of feminist um, kind of um, feeling is, is revolutionary, so I threw that in as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we speak up a little bit? We can't hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, there might even be a microphone here that works, but um, so I don't think it's plugged in properly. So, uh, okay, Frederica, I'll, I'll speak up a bit if I can. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Phil. Um, yes, I'm just wondering what your, your research phase was without researching the actual musical aspect of the film. Uh, pretty much uh, it was, yeah, researching and discovering the, the songs, okay. all the music. Uh, but at the same time as I was doing that, I was researching Greek history, you know, because I, I actually didn't know a lot about it. The, the people who live in Greece, they're saturated with it. You know, some of them uh, still hold the grudge from the civil war in the late forties. You know, that passes through the families, and it's and it's it's in everything. It's in their blood. Uh, so for me, I had to kind of just read up on 
a, a few things like the, the military dictatorship that was in place in the late 60s to, to mid 70s um, and things like that but but the music was uh, I mean I, I love music just generally like yeah. a, a anglophone music so for me to discover all these uh, songs uh, in the Greek language even like punk and things like that was just like uh, I don't know it was just um, yeah just very interesting and it, it's, it's kind of like a, a mirror and, and a validation of uh, all, all the other kind of you know musical art forms that, that I've known uh, and the the old embetica, the old Greek blues it is kind of like the American blues um, where it's very authentic and kind of a bit sorrowful but very you know, very tough at the same time so mm -hmm. anyone else? Mm -hmm. I would like to ask you about yeah. uh, the production. Yeah. The production seems to be uh, professional. It was very good sound and very good image. So, uh, <coughs> did you have the money to do that? Or you found funding? Or no, it was it just on your own? You did on your own? There's, there, there's no money involved at all. No? And, and that's why uh, some things are done like very low budget. Um, you have to be creative. For example, the the women who work in a factory that where they're kind of making shoes, I, I couldn't. I tried to get inside a factory and mm. show them, but in the end, I couldn't do that. So I just showed them going to work and you know, sort of having a break at work. Um, apart from that, um, yeah, I, I, I had no funding whatsoever, but I do have um, a couple of cameras and I do have a couple of microphones that are sort of high quality microphones. And if you're careful with what you're shooting with the live music. You can still make it sound okay. Mm -hmm. um, because the music was alive, maybe help that one for the sound. That helped for the sound. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be very careful with live music. I noticed <laughs> even, even mm -hmm. with the people uh, talk, uh, even then it was clear. And it was clear. It was yeah. clear and uh, yeah. professional shooting. <laughs> uh, reasonably, yeah. Yes, I guess reasonably. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I could have. When, when, the, when the guys are like looking at the camera and saying their points of view, uh, you know, professionally, you'd have you know three or four different lights set up and really try and get the light perfect on them and make sure it's black behind them. I had like a little lamp, mm -hmm. you know, and I had I think some other little lamp as well, and I just put them in place and and you just try and judge it um, correctly. I, I actually misjudged it the first time I shot that, and it was too dark. One of the speakers was too dark and. I had to ask him to come in again and do it all over again, and luckily he, he did it for me. But um, yeah, it's yeah. There's no money involved, so um, uh, no one was paid anything. Uh, people in Greece were wonderful to just they donate their time. Just without pay and yeah, yeah, yeah. The crew was very small. Yeah, yeah. There's only two or three people. Uh, sometimes uh, I'd have a couple of cameramen to be on the camera, other, other times I would do it myself. Mm. But, uh, with a, one or two scenes I had these two big cameras on tripods and I was sitting in a chair like this and I had <laughs> my left hand on this camera and my right hand on the other camera and I was doing it myself, a two camera setup. I mean, it sounds ridiculous but what you can do on a low budget uh, is, is amazing. So the low budget was excellent for me. Yeah, yeah the low budget thanks. Was uh, I think sometimes, you know, the camera shakes too much and, mm -hmm. you know, the lighting isn't quite right and things like that. But, yeah, thanks for that. So yeah. you work like that, like independently, and you don't, um, you don't do jobs professional, professional jobs? I, I don't, because I, I don't like to yes, do any kind of professional uh, jobs. All, so. all the movies that you have done, it's like that? Uh, not all of them. Not Sometimes I've had funding, mm -hmm. um, especially for films about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. one about 10 years ago, uh, from Australia, you know, the films I've made in, in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, I started making films in 1982, <coughs> so it's 35, um, 36 years ago now. Um, and and I got the funding for, for a few of them, for about six or seven of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any, anyone else? Bill. Uh, just to get uh, a perspective, a historical perspective, uh, uh, the, the year when you're doing the research and then shooting, and these uh, singers were all active from.
from what years? During the time you were there, and uh, the, certainly the ones that that, that I that I filmed, yes. uh, that I interviewed, and and that I filmed in performance, uh, were all active um, at that time, and some of them uh, have been active for many years, and I really wanted to show what was happening now, but at the same time have past songs uh, on with some scenes, but just with with actors. Uh, well, what can I say? There's um, because I'm an outsider to Greece. I, I, it's kind of like I filmed the most obvious people, the most obvious candidates. Uh, mm -hmm. There, there's a whole other underground of kind of newer, younger artists that mm -hmm. I didn't really have access to. I could have dug a bit deeper and and got access to them. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of the ones uh, I filmed are, are kind of well known. Mm -hmm. But but one of them. Uh, the guy with the big hair, big long yeah. hair, Antoine Parinis, he, he, he is not that well known at all. And, and he was shocked when I first asked mm. him to be one of the three main people. Mm. He was like, wow, I'm going to be with Pulikakos and Thanos Koi, you know, <laughs> featured. But, but I didn't care that he wasn't well known. I, I, I met him and I, and I really like, loved him, his energy. And, and he was a bit younger than the others. The others are, you know, in their 50s and... Pulikakos, the older guy, is he's in his 70s, early 70s. Uh, so, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, yeah, I want to... No, no, I think the, the documentary, it's a document of the times. It, it certainly it, is. They yeah. mentioned 2015, you know, during the crisis. In one year. And we one. take it that it is referring, you know, it's referring to that, those political events of those... Well, Definitely. When people say the last yeah. five years, they kind of mean the crisis and, yeah. and things like that, yeah. Mm. But, but that's going back a bit from 2015, isn't it? Look, some things go back, you yeah, know, the, right. the fascist kind of uh, elements uh, within Greece go way back. Um, poverty, you know, goes way back. Um, yeah. Governments, um, you know, with their suppression, it, it, goes, it goes way back. Um, so, yeah. 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 Footage of an event, 2008 or 9 in December, is it, was that some sort of demonstration where a student gets killed? Is that right? Yeah. And that's what yeah. Basically, yeah. Protesting. Yeah, exactly. It was a it was a 15 year old boy um, who was in um, just kind of playing with some mates uh, in the anarchist area of Oksakia, and look, the 15 year old boy, he was like an anarchist, you know, he was, you know, kind of taunting the police a little bit, but the police had no right to just blatantly point a gun at him and shoot him dead. Um, so that's why basically all the other students and anarchists around, uh, you know, were quite upset and, um, and, you know, had to protest, basically. It really rallied everyone, J just like the, the death in 2013 from fascists uh, of, a, of a Greek guy, um, uh, kind of rallied everyone as well. Uh, I mentioned him in the credits in a little photo. Uh, so sometimes, you know, you get um, these little moments where, you know, the, the, the fascists uh, or the police kind of overstep the, the line and basically shoot someone dead. And what can I say? The, the students and anarchists don't like that and they're going to protest, yeah. Mm. So, um, Letter to God was banned, was it? Yeah, that was a banned song. Well, how, how could it be banned? Oh, it was banned. It, you it, mean you couldn't perform it? Or you what? could. It wasn't I mean, uh, allowed. By the nature of the whole context, I would have thought it, government. It, it was performed. You know what relevance? I mean, it, mm. does that stop oh, people performing? It, it doesn't stop performances. I, I don't think. think. Maybe, maybe Dimitri might know this. If certain songs like that, I mean, the records were banned and, yeah. and banned from being oh, on the so, radio. So, so that a lot of those are put out on record. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, like, and that one, right? that one was originally actually from the 40s, I think, late 40s, uh, I write a letter to God. But it, Sotiria Bellu does it a bit later in the 60s. That's the version we hear. Uh, but basically, yeah, the records were banned, yeah. So there is an underground circulation of these, these are sold, I take it, then they're... Um, so there is the records would have still been uh, sold. Uh, I think it was banned from radio. I think that would be the case. I talked about it. Oh, some years ago. Yeah. CDs in general, a lot of the music, 
in the film? Uh, that, these that days, they circulate on CD. These days, um, yeah, the government doesn't care too much. I, I don't think uh, any anything is banned at the moment. So ev everything was released in the last thirty years. Um, do you know, Dimitri, if performers were were banned from performing sometimes? I think you know, mostly, you know, that was uh, during the dictatorship, sixty-seven uh, to uh, seventy-four. You know, I mean, um, mm -hmm. if you if you're listening uh, certain songs, you know, especially you know by Emily Stolarakis or mm -hmm. Sotiria Bellu and uh, other you know leftists, you know, uh, in the area of the you know music, uh, then you probably risk not to go to jail, you know, for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you know, um, I don't, I don't have a question. Uh, I think you know um, this film here. It's a little bit of everything because you know it makes you know everything. You know it starts you know from uh, of course you know I've got you know the the repetical uh, sign you know of the story, but also we've got you know the you know the the, um, <clears throat> the contemporary um, protest songs you know which is mostly uh, consisting of punk and uh, hard rock or something like that you know or even the latest. Uh, uh, kind, which is, uh, you know, hip-hop, you know, yeah. political hip-hop. Uh, I think, you know, this one, this film, you know, it's really political because, um, um, you know, it shows um, how you can organize by yourself, you know, um, mm -hmm. outside, you know, of the mainstream. As yeah. Thanos Coyes, you know, uh, said, you know, the film outside of the mainstream, outside of the, you know, managers and all of these uh, yeah. uh, strange uh, guys who yeah. just want money and nothing else yeah. um, and um, and I, I want you know to point out also you know that um, uh, this this these things are not just happening you know in the music area but they're happening you know uh, in other areas like uh, yeah. especially the last eight years and especially after you know the 2008 riots uh, that sparked you know the um, the points, you know the Alexis Rigoropoulos uh, murder by the police um, in 2008, in December, um, you know, we've got you know lots of um, experiments, uh, social exper experiments, you know, from below, you know, which is uh, uh, could be uh, music groups, you know, that uh, as we said, you know, uh, they operate in uh, outside of mainstream managers yeah. or whatever. Uh, also, you know, uh, we've got you know bookshops, we've got you know restaurants, we've got uh, collectives, you know, that people oh, huge, they're coming together mm -hmm. um, and they're doing you know the things you know they they want to to do. So yeah. uh, outside you know of the of the mainstream, outside you yeah. know of the political uh, the yeah. uh, the mainstream political um, absolutely uh, oh, it, it's the, the, you know, the, the most the yeah. most radicalized um, alternative. Um, um, City Athens, especially that, that I've ever seen. There's a huge it's network incredible. there. You know, there are things you know that we don't even know until today. I know you know these things because uh, the last uh, years, you know, um, I'm part of a group here in Melbourne that uh, we're doing um, a program, a radio program in uh, 3CR. Everyone knows 3CR, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every Tuesday night, 10 to, to 11, uh, half English, half Greek. Uh, it's called Greek Resistance Bulletin, and uh, we're doing. Uh, this stuff actually. Uh, we started, you know, as an anti fascist initiative because we had a problem, you know, with Golden Dawn here in Melbourne a few years ago and we mm. still have. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. Um, so, um, and other, you know, right, far right elements. Um, so, and then we decided to um, expand our interest and our, um, you know, um, activity uh, to promote uh, here in Australia. These experiments, these social uh, social experiments, come below, which we think you know that they're really worth you know, to do, because they saw you know another a different um, proposal you know to the crisis, to the so-called crisis. You know. mm -hmm. uh, that's why you know I consider you know films like that you know extremely political. Mm -hmm. They're extremely uh, given a message that uh, uh, even we we don't live if we don't live in in Greece, but we live here. I think you know, we have you know to to think about it, and uh, I think you know we have you know to do stuff in our areas, um, you know, respective areas uh, uh, that you know we can be you know in solidarity with them. Uh, you know, Certainly. I think yeah, as Dimitris Pulikago said, solidarity, alulegi, it's the, the biggest thing, one of the biggest uh, weapons mm -hmm. we've got. Yeah. So that's why you know I consider you know these films like that. Uh, 
extremely polluted. What, what um, I've noticed, um, and Dimitri can answer this, is that the, the Greeks in, in Australia, in Melbourne, the, the Greek Australians, um, many of them seem to be cut off from you know, the issues and problems uh, in Greece, and they're leading a very Australian life, and they've become very middle class and, and, and very rich, um, and they sort of don't care. How, how do you see that, Dimitri? Look, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not an old migrant. Uh, I came to Australia in '92, you know. But um, mm -hmm. um, you know, in '92 there was not, you know, migration. I think uh, the, the migration, you know, from Greece in that time, you know, was really small. I think, and I'm not one of us, you know. Uh, we could uh, believe, you know, that after some years, you know, this thing, you know, it's going to happen again. But um, but this migration today, it's totally different, you know, than the other one, you know, that happened in the '50s and '60s, of course. Uh, this is a different, totally different thing. Um, what I see, you know, in some, um, uh, from my involvement with the Greek community, uh, as a journalist or as a community um, activist, whatever, I don't know, activist, I don't like so much that word, anyway. Um, so, um, is that um, a big part of you know, the Greek community, it's really conservative. And, um, yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't think you know that there's not people that they have, uh, for example, you know, against you know the military dictatorship. I know you know there was the left here, the Greek Australian left, you know, was really active, you know, against you know the Huda, and uh, not just in Melbourne but all over Australia. They were you know occupations of uh, consulates and stuff like that, you know, and demonstrations and um, and at the time you know they were Hudas in um, Spain or Chile, you know, mm -hmm. and I know that. Um, they were, you know, common actions, you know, of this, especially these three ethnic communities against, you know, their respective, you know, dictatorships in their countries. And, um, you know, um, I think, you know, that there are still, you know, people today in the Greek community that um, they, they still keep in the spirit of revolt, you know, but they have, you know, to fight here, you know. Mm. The, 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 the connection with, with Greece is different. We're not living there. We're living here, you mm. know. Yeah. And if we want, you know, to fight, we have to fight here. We have to start, as I said before, you know, in solidarity with Greece, with Chile, with Syria, with everyone, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. But we have to do it through, you know, our struggles here in Australia. Because we live here, we work here, we study here, mm -hmm. you know, we've got our families here, we've got, you know, uh, our life here. So. Um, that's the meaning of the... Oh, I think Australia's in a great position to, um, you know, help with uh, these kind of causes. But I, I just worry that pe most people in Australia sort of don't care, you know. They're, they're just leading a certain kind of life and, and it's only a, a real kind of alternative kind of set, to it, which at the moment might, might only be 5% of the population, whereas in the past it was, you know, 20 or 30. But... Any other questions to do with the film, I think, maybe? Mm -hmm. or we can go into yeah. Greek stuff okay. a lot. <laughs> Mark? About the, I like the free-flowing structure of the whole thing. Yeah. That's what really appealed to me. I just wonder how you organised it all. You know, just there's so much there. Oh, I, I loved it. I, I, I loved um, organising everything. And, and uh, I really wanted, you know, like each scene to be quite different, you know. Like you, you, you almost don't don't know what's coming next, and and so all the documentary sequences, uh, there's no two sequence two scenes that are done in the same kind of way, the same kind of documentation um, of of the themes. Um, same with the music clips, um, the songs that were musical with the actors miming, or the songs that weren't that. I like I really enjoyed kind of mixing it all up. So. Um, so there'd be something slightly different each time. Um, that's the Goddard in me, I think, where mm. I just love to kind of experiment. And um, Did you just sync up each sequence on the day, or uh, for the syncing? For the music clips, how, you know. Uh, yeah, pretty much. You know, we'd record with the, the music playing, and the actors would, you know, mime uh, to that. Uh, otherwise, I had the music in my head, and I knew what, which kind of shots. Uh, I needed uh, for that, so it's, I, I, I don't know, it's like everything was shot really quickly too, you know, most of the scenes you see, like the music clips, they were done in like, you know, two hours or one hour or one and a half hours, 
you know, the, the girl that's walking outside the church. You know, we did that in about an hour, you know, and, and one of the things I like doing is not having any rehearsals. So basically the actor knows what the scene is and, and the actor is free to kind of do what they want. And, and hardly ever did I have to, you know, give direction. Sometimes I did, but most of the time, you know, I, I really like to just let kind of things happen and, and have that kind of raw quality uh, in, the, in the acting. So, but yeah, there's a lot of material in the film and there's other material that I could have put in as well. But at two hours, it was just bursting, so I couldn't do more than that. I, I actually created a different version in Greece uh, last year called Songs of the Underground instead of Songs of Revolution. And, and that was like documentary only, you know, without the scenes with the actors. And I put in like extra documentary footage, but obviously took out all the, the scenes with the actors. And, and pretty much that version I showed more in Greece than, than this version. So there's a lot of material that I could, I could work with. That would have been more conventional? Uh, not necessarily more conventional, although that documentary version has a, a bit more concert footage. And that concert footage is, yeah, more conventional in that, you know, we're just seeing a performer, you know, performing. There's nothing too special about that. I really didn't want that much, that kind of stuff in the film. Because you can get that on YouTube. You just, you know, you know, search the, the performer's name and the, the, some of the same things probably come up that are in my film. But Yeah, especially with Polikako. Polikako, you know, so, you know yeah. it's a name. Yeah. There are certain Everyone knows Dimitri Polikako. Yeah. You know, yes. and, and Thanos Kois, you know, it's one of our aids anyway. So, you know, I remember him, you know, from my yeah. days. Kois is uh, <laughs> fantastic. He's, he's, he's an incredible uh, person. Any more questions? Maybe we can just wrap it up, I think. Um, yeah, so we, uh, people uh, happy, uh, are welcome to kind of hang around now for a drink. I know it's getting late on a Sunday night, so... Um, but thanks for coming. Uh, um, it's public holiday tomorrow. Public holiday, yeah. yeah.